Our Spurs fans expecting way too much next season, and the Spurs home has a new name. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope you're having a great end of the work week. TGIF, yeah, it's over. Weekend is here. We'll get you through uh, today's work day, nevertheless. Hey, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, the Ken's 5 Plus app, so many more outlets, and you guys are the everydayers part of the Locked On Podcast Network. What are we talking about today? Well, there's a lot of hype. So the big news just happened. We'll talk about that later. The Spurs got a new name for their uh, home. Uh, There's a lot of freshness, a lot of newness, a lot of excitement going on right now in the uh, AT, well, the formerly AT&T Center, San Antonio. Just across the globe, Spurs fans are excited. But with everything, not just Wimby, just everything overall, should Spurs fans calm down a bit, take a breath, realize that maybe, just maybe, they have to lower expectations next season. And also, speaking of the uh, Spurs home, we're talking about the big news that happened yesterday. Spurs uh, Arena has a new name. And, well, as of right now, a Spur won't be playing a couple of games to start the new season. And speaking of newness and freshness, look, I mean, you all pretty heard by now, you know, there's a new name at the uh, Spurs home, which is the Frost Bank center we'll talk about that in more detail later but that's just another leaf that's just another turn that's just another fork in the road to let you know that gone are the big three days gone are the 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 nba's uh dynasty the spurs of the 2000s it's almost all but over the last piece the last piece left is popovich that's it tim duncan he's off surfboarding somewhere right now enjoying retirement Parker, he's about to get enshrined into the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame. Manu, he's enjoying the great outdoors. And the rest uh, is uh, pretty much history. So as the Spurs are getting set to add a new chapter in this new era of the Spurs, with just a a new name for their home, and Wimby here, and fresh new kids. Some of them are not even old enough to drink yet. Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's time that perhaps leaning on the big three era should also come to an end as well. It's great to reminisce. It's great to think back of those days. But let's face it, Timmy, Tony, Manu, they're not coming back. They're not walking down that tunnel anymore. And as the Spurs turn a leaf, I think Spurs fans should also close that chapter in Spurs history and look forward to what is coming ahead just in a few short months. Uh, you know, these guys, these kids, you know, I'm pretty sure they respect what came before them, but they're trying to make their own chapter now. You know, as much as you want to ask Keldon or, or Wimby what it's like to be leaning on and learning from the big three and Tony there in practice and Manu there, you know, this is their time now. This is their time to shine, their time to prove themselves. Just like the big three era had, this is their 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 golden opportunity to prove that they can lead this Spurs champion to a championship, just like the big three era did. So, as we get ready for the new season, uh, you know, just keep that in mind that this is their time. And and look, a lot of you kids that grew up and were born in the uh, Tim Duncan era and lived through decades of winning. You know, now your kids now are going to see the beginnings of a new chapter. And you're going to be the voice of the veteran old Spurs fans like myself uh, to telling those kids, like, hey, you know, let me tell you back in my day, you know, the big three, you know, this is their time now. So it's time for them to enjoy it and time for us as older fans uh, to uh, help this new generation of Spurs and fans into this new era. Yeah, there are going to be some lean times. And yeah, even with Wemby, guess what? Yeah, there's probably some losing ahead and some missed opportunities and missed playoff chances or just court short, you know, runs in the playoffs. But yeah, it, it, it's good to know that the Spurs have a rich history, but a new history is about to unfold. And we're going to talk about that right now. Are Spurs fans expecting way too much overall, not just Wemby, 
in the new season. Who's going to help me do that? I was going to bring him on. He is Nick Mantis. And there he is, everybody. Nick Mantis of iHeartRadio. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Nick underscore underscore Mantis. If you don't do the two underscores, Nick is going to come after you. You don't, you don't want Nick to get angry. No, you don't want to see him mad. Okay, I'm not going to come after anybody, but uh, you know, you're not going to be able to find me. You know, you might. It, I've actually been confused. There is a Canadian politician who we have the exact same name. Oh, get and out. actually, on his Wikipedia page for like a yeah. couple of months, it was my headshot on his page. So no way. I, True. We, we contacted. Wow. I think I tweeted it out and, and tagged Wikipedia, and they were just like, "Sorry, our mistake," and they switched to him. So, that is crazy. So you know, I'm, I'm kind of. I'm kind of there with you. Um, back in his heyday, the 49ers quarterback, uh, Jeff Garcia. Uh, I would get that a lot. Like, like the quarterback? Like the right. quarterback guy? And yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. I wish, you know, but right. uh, no, that is not me. Hey, Nick is going to tell you more about iHeartRadio, what he's doing there uh, later on on this show. Uh, Nick, exciting times for the Spurs. We're going to talk about uh, the new name of the uh, Spurs home, the Frost Bank yeah. Center, later. Um there's Wimby in town. It, it feels like the Spurs, the city, the fans are still breathing in that new car smell, that fresh mm. cut grass, yeah. that uh, flowers that are just bloomed. Yeah. And it's great. And it feels like everybody's soaking in on it. But I don't want to rain in their parade, but I want to be realistic. We okay. have to understand that this team is still a work in progress light. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, from what I've been talking to with, with fans out here, I think it, it all mm -hmm. depends on on which type of fans you talk to. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you speak to like casual fans who and, and, and recent fans who are thinking that, you know, the second right. coming of Christ occurred when when we landed <laughs> in San Antonio on June 24th. Right. They may be a little bit, you know, unrealistic when it comes to things. But for those of us who maybe have followed the team from far or right, for right, me right. or new to town and have a lot of invested interest like you have in, in, in the team itself. Um, I, I think we all understand that there's a lot of work that has to be done before this team makes mm -hmm. it back to an NBA finals or even a shot at even making the playoffs. We know about not just this young core that we've been talking about, you know, the overguarded, the overcrowded guard position mm -hmm. uh, that has come up in, in recent news as well. You know, whether or not certain guys are going to fit in San Antonio or Austin, right. we're going to have a couple of months through the preseason as well to kind of figure out who's going to be here and who's not, especially at the guard position. And then you get to the development of Wemby. So there's yeah. so many other things. And then there's the development of Wemby that, you know, it, it plays into a part. There's so many other layers, not just whether or not Wemby can play in the NBA, that goes into the progress of this team and then this, of this organization as it turns a new leaf into yeah. a new chapter in his organization of having now Frostbank Arena. And so right. I, I think it's 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 going to be interesting to see how the entire organization as a whole moves forward in the next couple of months. I think mm – -hmm. They've been taking some some good steps in order to make sure they're doing things at a very cautious pace. Right. In a way in which you get, you know, Wemby in there for a couple of games. He doesn't play for, mm -hmm. you know, the the uh, right. in, in, for the French national team. He's got a more of a relaxed summer of, you know, staying away from the media. And and now we get to see as we enter training camp whether or not, you know, the things are going to be moving as they as they should when it comes to figuring out who fits in which pieces. Right. And I, I think. It, it's going to be exciting to see this team move forward. I don't think necessarily it's it's everyone is thinking that there's too much to be mm -hmm. on this team, but I think there's a lot of people who maybe are yearning for that those big three days. Right. Who look at the excitement of Wemby and think, okay, now this is the piece that we needed in order to get back to where we were, but mm -hmm. there's so much more that goes into it. And I think there's so much more that we're going to see over the next couple of months that's going to lead into – more steps forward to right. making progress that need that needs that needs to be done for this organization to move forward. Yeah, you just look at just the immediate roster. They still got to do some trimming. I mean, yeah. all NBA teams do, yeah. but you know the Spurs got some big decisions to make uh, in the next few months. There's also, uh, you know, the obvious such as integrating Wimby into the system. But you look at just the product on the court as a whole, including Wimby. Mm -hmm. This 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 team still needs to get that sandpaper out and you know sh sharpen some things and 
clean things, run it through the dry, the, the car wash a few times. You know, you could go literally down each and every player, Nick, and mm-hmm. say, yeah, he's neat works. Yeah, he's neat. I mean, gone other days, I said in the intro, or the big three, because you're like, oh, Tim, Tony, and Monty, yeah, just roll the ball out. They're good. Yeah, right. just put some players around them. You right. know, that's, that's not the case anymore now. Now, every game, I wouldn't say he's going to mirror last season. Obviously, they're going to be in games more. They're probably not going to get curb stomped as much. Perhaps losing streaks are not as long or as bad. Uh, you know, just Wimby alone should eliminate a lot of that. Sure. But look, uh, I'm just, just random player I'm picking here, Kelton Johnson. Good player. Yay. Mm-hmm. But has he had any really adjustments and new facets to his game? We don't, we'll don't. we find out. You know, Trey Jones. You think Kelton Johnson's an Austin guy. I could tell. Or you want to move him? You want to move? I don't him. want to move him. Okay. He's just a he's just a good example of how okay. this team, even though you have kids that are entering their fifth year, fourth year, yeah. they're still a work in progress. Look at Trey Jones. Yeah, I big fan of Trey Jones. Love his game, but can't hit an outside shot. Mm. I mean, you, he can't. You look at uh, Jeremy Sohan. He's just going to enter his second season. Mm-hmm. He just finished his rookie season, so we'll see what leaps he takes next season and then of course Wimby and him adjusting to the NBA level and playing an 82 game grind yeah. versus what like a 50 game grind in the French league I want to say so, you're correct on that yeah yeah, yeah. so you, you know as much as their excitement and rightfully so there should be excitement in San Antonio I I still think cautions fans that the road to the title we're the team is probably not on it yet. What do you think about that, Nick? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think there's still a lot of progress that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. I think um, one of the things that I'm really excited to see is all the guys who we we talk about these NBA all-stars who were talking about Wemby and saying, you know, this guy's an alien, you know, this, this is, I've never seen (laughs) anything like this and hyping him up before the draft even started. Now they get to put their reputation on the line against the guy they were hyping oh, up. Yeah. Now we get to see what he can do against that level of talent. And those mm-hmm. guys who have been in the league for a couple of years, who understand the grind, who understand the questions that he had when he was yeah. having dinner with Duncan and with Manu, asking, how do you guys get enough rest on the road? Yeah. These guys are going to make sure to put him through the ringer because they want to put him through the test, just like – Guys who were putting them through the test. Steph Curry always talks about a game that he played against Kobe. Kobe switched to get on him and put defense on because he wanted that challenge. He wanted to shut this kid down, having played against his dad, Del Curry, before. So he wanted a little bit of a a rivalry, or not just rivalry, but some more competition. These guys want to go at Wemby because they want to welcome him into the NBA. Everybody has that welcome to the NBA moment. They're Mm -hmm. going to try to – every single person – who goes up against him every single night is going to want to give him that moment. And so it's going to be interesting to see how he starts to, you know, whether right. or not he, he takes a step back or whether or not he leans into the aggression of the league, he leans into the stress of the league. And I think, you know, when it comes to getting to a championship right away this next season, mm-hmm. I, I think we, you know, to pull in in Texas terms, pull on the reins a little bit. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Bring the horse yeah, back. Yeah. You know, let's don't get the, don't, yeah, don't get the river parade ready yet. Don't get those no. barges decorated quite yet. Hey, the we only get back- the only river parade you're going to see, your only river thing you're going to see with the Spurs yeah. was Wemby's introduction when he right. first came to sit. That's the only exactly. river thing you. So everybody, yeah. just keep that in mind for the rest of the season. Oh, I mean, or 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 or, or Nick's uh, celebration or uh, arrival to San Antonio. I mean, that was a great river walk celebration. You know, when they when San Antonio. Uh, Welcomed you to San Antonio. Oh, right? stop it. Stop it. No, that was, <laughs> yeah. They, if you want to call, there was, there was the only celebration that they had when I came to town was probably my girlfriend and I going out to dinner and then finding right. ourselves in Southtown somewhere having a great time. So, so yeah. yeah, but that was that, that's our, that's our parade or our chance. Yeah, exactly. Of actually being in the same city for, for the first time, having, you know, done doing long distance for a while. So, yeah. He is Nick Mantis of iHeartRadio. Follow him on Twitter at Nick underscore underscore Mantis. When we get back, we're going to continue this chat. Uh, we'll take a look at the updated Vegas uh, t- team total win projection for the Spurs. Vegas right, is Vegas wrong? And then get into more about the Frost Bank Center. And uh, yeah, Devontae Graham's in trouble. No. We'll talk about that and more right here on Locked on Spurs. 
Hey, I want to talk to you about Ibotta. If you're picking up burgers and hot dogs for a summer barbecue, you know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back for it with Ibotta? Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you are purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get cash back. It is super easy. On average, Ibotta users earn about 120 bucks per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you can get real cash back. You can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands, retailers too, when you start with Ibotta including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying Ibotta out by using code LOCKED when you register. So what you want to do is just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download for free the Ibotta app and use code LOCKED. Once again, use code LOCKED. That'll get you five bucks for just trying Ibotta out. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED. And we are back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Nick Mantis of iHeartRadio at Nick underscore underscore Mantis on Twitter. And by the way, follow him on Instagram. He's like a you have your, it's like your own split personality on there. It's like you just turn into this other person. I have fun on there. I, I'd really do. I think my, you do. Yes. My, you, my you want to be the next voiceover for the city of San Antonio crosswalks. But they said Cesar Chavez wrong. They said they said like like Cesar Chavez or something like that. It was yeah, like, like the they, robotic voice, like, whoever puts it on there. And I, I live right off of Cesar Chavez, and so I'm like, Yeah, excuse me. You're gonna yeah. say his name right if you're gonna name a name name a street after him. Like, come on, exactly the legend that he is, you get better say his exactly. name right. So yeah, a, as Nick mentioned, there's a street named after him in San Antonio. Come on, let's get it together, San Antonio. Ooh, All right. right, we're talking about your silver and black and whether Fans should pump the brakes and just lower a little expectations heading into the new season, knowing that it's still a work in progress. Mm. But there's being realistic, Nick, about the Spurs' chances and their win totals next year. And then there's, huh? Yeah. And that's what exactly what Caesar Sportsbook uh, did to your San Antonio Spurs. Now, of course, keep in mind this changes every so often when it comes to Vegas, but Caesar Sportsbook put out their win total projection for your silver and black. Nick, Vegas Caesar Sportsbook has given them a projected win total of 29 and a half. <laughs> huh? What? What? 29, 29 and a half? half. Yeah, uh, uh, let's just say uh, no, Caesars. That's a sucker bet. If you're going to bet, bet the over, everybody. Uh, there's no way, uh, Nick. I, I this This team is... It's at 35 or more, and I'm being, you know, comfy, comfy with my projection here. I, I mean, 29 and a half is just ridiculous, Nick. Absolutely. I mean, the Greek yeah. in me is ashamed that Caesars would do something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean, yeah. this is, the, you know, the, with the, the Mediterranean, because we, you know, at one point we're probably conquered by Rome. Um, but yeah. when it comes to the fact that you, you look at this organization, you look at this team, and I think people – really, really early made their assumptions off of what the projection of Wemby is going to be this next year mm -hmm. off of that first preseason game. And I, I think they don't really think that they have anything else. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, they're thinking you add one piece and that's really going to be it. And you're not really going to have anybody who's yeah. really going to, you know, try hard or, or go into mm -hmm. a next season of actually playing defense, of, of scoring 25 points and then automatically not being quote unquote subjected to an injury the next game and right you know yeah. so i mean you this is a this is full throttle this is you know putting the pedal to the metal on, on on this next year and to say 29 and a half is to say that you don't know what's going on down here and mm -hmm. I, I think that's that speaks for a lot of the nba and i think that speaks for a lot of the rest of the country that doesn't know that i i think this team is is at least at least the 35 win team yeah, yeah this I next year and, I'm not going to be surprised if they get 40 or more. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the who that was we were just talking, you know, beforehand. Yeah. I think it was the the Thunder. I think are are a 35, 37 win team this past off this mm -hmm. past season. I mean, that in itself, I, I think, proves enough to show that you know that when it comes to putting stacking up wins and stacking up games in the season, 
the Spurs, I think, can easily consider themselves the 2023 yeah. Thunder. If you, you just with the yeah. roster they have now, and who knows if they're going to switch guys around or get anybody else when it comes to moving pieces. And so, yeah. you know, I, I think this is going to be a lot more than just 29 yeah. and a half. Get yeah. out of here. Get when, out of town with yeah, that. Yeah. When I saw the Caesars projections there, my first thought was, uh, Tell me you don't watch the Spurs without telling me you watch the Spurs, kind of thing, you know. Because there you go. There you go. Uh, if anybody, yeah. uh, they just got to look at last season. We know what they were doing. We know what yeah. the memo was to start the season. It was to, oh, Kelden, you got dry skin. You got to sit out today. Right. Oh, Jeremy Sohan, did you stump your toe last night? Darn it, you got to sit out. We know they right. were tanking, and we know that this team. If healthy last season, probably not one of the worst teams in the league, or if not the worst in the team league, they're, they're probably uh, better than their record reflects. Yeah. So you insert Wimby, you insert hopefully cross the fingers a fully healthy team, and also I think we're discounting this so much, Nick, that this sp- current Spurs young core mm-hmm. uh, they took some beatdowns last season. I mean, some major ones. And yeah, there were times, Nick, when I would watch this team be up by double figures. I'm gonna go get a snack at the fridge, and I come yep. back. I'm like, "Oh, they're down ten now. How in the hell did that happen?" You know, like, "Oh, it's right because they reread the memo. That's why. Hey, you right. can't be winning at the end of the third quarter." Exactly. But so, yeah, I think you factor that in. I, I and, and a plus to the experience and Wimby and the uh, you know. The, I, I also another thing we don't talk about. And I got to save this for another lockdown Spurs is. Low key, this team is kind of deep. Yeah. If you really look at it, this yeah. team is deep. When your projected six man is either going to be Keldon or Devin, that tells you a lot. That tells you a lot. Right. So, and and you see how we're getting excited right now about like, hey, Vegas, you're wrong. And look at the depth and and look at the experience they got. It's I get it. It's easy for fans to get sucked into that expectation. And oh yeah, we're we're playoff bound. We're gonna secure. One of the six slots, you know, before and avoid all that play in mess. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think this team is still in a rebuild light. Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. I agree. I, and I think mm-hmm. that it, it's not necessarily, uh, like you said, a rebuild light. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's 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 only one calorie of a rebuild right mm-hmm. now, uh, because we understand what the what the memo was last year, and I, and I think. What's going to be really, really interesting is seeing, okay, now you add a piece like Wemby, mm-hmm. and now you have guys going full tilt. Now there isn't a con- conversation about, yeah. oh, you know, do, are you breathing air right now? And you had a good yeah. game the last couple of – yeah, you, yeah. you have to go on the injured list. Um, and so I, I think to see this team that, – that's what, that's what I'm more excited about, to see this team going full throttle, mm-hmm. to see these guys really going after it and putting Wemby on top of that and knowing that you have – you know, Zach Collins and Mamu mm-hmm. and, you know, all those guys who were those bigs who were ready to help out and, you know, be an, another presence down low when things get get tough or he gets tired in certain ways. And, you know, it's 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 going to be exciting to just watch that mm-hmm. yeah. and just enjoy yeah. that and and, yeah. and know that this is this is the team that's really going forward with that. Yeah. And yeah. sure, expectations can be high. Things can get a little crazy when it comes to predictions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Caesar Sportsbook is going crazy with their prediction that we just talked about. Jeez. But I think it, it, for the most part, we have to all understand that this is a completely new year with a completely new mindset and a completely new future for this organization. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I, I This first team will be better next season. They're definitely not a 22 win uh, season team. We know that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and uh, will they be? Uh, Hella competitive, sure. Well, they take power teams to the distance. Yeah, I think so. I think they'll take Boston and, and your Denver's and your Phillies uh to three, four quarters of, of solid competition. Yeah. Uh, but there's levels to this, everybody. There's tanking, and you know, you hope to win the lottery or get a high pick. They definitely did that. Then there's adding pieces around that player, and then there's evaluating the talent, wanting to move on, and then there's getting a little luck too. You yeah. know, and as well as just chemistry, uh, and, and everybody knows this, Nick. Uh, you know, this Wimby is not walking into a ready-made team. He's walking into a team that needs a piece like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duncan had Robinson. Uh, Robinson was already set, and he had Sean Elliott and Avery Johnson waiting there in the wings for Timmy. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, that makes the case for Wimby. So there's still a work in progress here, people. Uh, so as excited as you are, excited as I am, excited as Nick is, and rightfully so, just keep in mind that this is still a work in progress. By the way, Nick, when you were referring to your Greek heritage, I thought you were going to bring up Jimmy the Greek. When it's oh, no. Caesar's book. no, no, no. I, yeah, I, yeah. I like to just keep my career on the on an uprising and stuff, and we all know how <laughs> Jimmy's ended, so we're just going to go ahead and leave it at that. By the way, great 30 for 30 for him about him. Yeah. You're solid. It's a great 30 for 30. Hey, excellent. when we get back, we're going to catch you up on some Spurs news and notes. A player is going to be out for a couple uh, games to start the season. And as you heard, there's a new name for the Spurs home, the Frost Bank Center. But before we continue, I want to talk to you about Muslingers drive through Coffee. Before I let Nick go, have you had a Muslingers yet, Nick? I've not. I have not. I've been extremely busy with stuff oh. that's going on. I know. I know. I know. I've been. I've been. You but know, you heard I, the. But you heard the good. The good things about it, right? I've heard amazing things about it. There I have. Go. There yeah. you go. Well, we'll make sure to get Nick a cup of coffee from Muslingers ASAP. All right, let's give him a break real fast, and uh, I talk to you about. God, Lord, this stuff. This, it's glitching, man. I caught it right now. It's not. Yeah, it's not bad on my end. It's weird on my end. All right, three, two. One. Yeah, you got to try yourself a Muslingers coffee right now. You want to go to Muslingers Drive Through Coffee, uh, located in San Antonio at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Over 300 five star reviews cannot be wrong. If you need a pick me up, if you need a latte, if you need their signature drink, which is called the Muslinger, it's dark chocolate, caramel, steamed milk, really, really good. You want to go to Muslingers Drive Through Coffee right now. Uh, look, they got something called the Alien. Should give it away already. It's about Wimby. It's a drink inspired by him. It's a full can of Red Bull plus Kiwi and Red Apple. Really great. But if you don't want all that punch, you don't want all that pick-me-up, you want to take it easy, get yourself the OG OJ. That is basically a recreation of the old school Orange Julius. It's back recreated at Muslinger's. I like it. Everybody has tried it, like it. Uh, you definitely have to get it. Also, they got donuts. In case you didn't know, yeah, they're not just about coffee, everybody. They have donuts, which are a hit. Don't believe me? Just go on social media. Speaking of social media, find them on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Threads. Pick a platform. They are there at Muslinger S A T X. Look. They are locally owned. They're a proud local sponsor of Locked On Spurs, serving the community, friendly staff, great menu. I mean, the, I just touched the uh, tip of the iceberg when it comes to Muslingers. Go to Muslingers today, right now, located near 281 and 1604, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Life is too short for bland coffee. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Nick Mantis of iHeartRadio. Follow him on Twitter at Nick underscore underscore Mantis. Let's catch you up with some Spurs news and notes. Got a couple mm. things for you. Uh, Devontae Graham will not be playing the first two games of the Spurs regular season if he's still a San Antonio Spur. In case you missed it, uh, he has been suspended by the NBA for pleading guilty to a DWI in North Carolina. And I keep this in mind. This, this happened in July 2022 when he was still a member of the Pelicans. Uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, don't want Devontae Graham to start the season. And Nick, the team still needs to do a little trimming of the roster there. Hopefully, you know, and the Spurs like to keep it squeaky clean. Yeesh, you know, you don't know. But look, I mean, it did happen when he wasn't a Spur. So there's that factor. So keep that in mind. But He's a he's a bucket getter though. I I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't be unhappy. You know, if they kept him around, the the kid can score. Yeah, he can score. Uh, he is a bucket getter. Um, he did have that you know that incident, mm -hmm. which, I uh, you know, you did, uh, God forbid, you know, he were ever to hit anybody while, yeah. while, while driving like that, and and thank God that everybody was okay. But um, I, I kind of chalk this up to just another sad moment in an in injury yeah. riddled career for Devonte Graham. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's only two games, you know. He's looking to come back from an abductor injury, uh, which mm -hmm. for those who didn't study the human body, weren't strength coaches like I used to be, that's a part of your uh, uh, hip in that area, um, part of your thigh muscles as well. Mm -hmm. um, so more in the groin area kind of, and that it, it kind of pulling, mm -hmm. pulling your knees together, if you will. Um, and so, you know, to, to see him only play 20 games last year, it, 
with an organization that you know is extremely guard heavy right now if you just look at the depth charts he's third on the point guard mm -hmm. depth chart um if he's healthy by the time of the start of the season and then he's fourth on the shooting guard depth chart sure. um you know, and as you mentioned, with a franchise who hates anything that sniffs of a yeah. scandal in any way, yeah. they're they're not going to want somebody like that, not just around the organization, but not around Wemby. Um, yeah. You know, they're trying to um, kind of treat him almost like a bubble boy effect yeah. of keeping him in a spot where he's not going to mm -hmm. be influenced in any way that any, by anything that's going to, you know, harm him or hurt him. And, you know, I think that when it comes to the consequences of these charges, I mean, it's 12 months of unsupervised probation. Mm -hmm. He was required to pay $393 in, in fines and court fees. Um, so besides the first two games, sure, he's good to go. But as far as the organization as a whole, I'd, I wouldn't see them wanting to keep him, not just mm -hmm. because of this incident, but also because of the fact that where, where are you really going to put him in if not mm -hmm. only is he has yeah. the ability to get in buckets, but – you're already thick at both of those positions. And then when it comes to, you know, not only just getting him on the floor, but also, you know, having him as, as maybe possibly mm -hmm. a, a part of a package to get an even bigger free agent. It, it, I, I could say you can make the case for him to be a, you know, a, mm -hmm. a walking bucket if, if he can get back to the, the ways in which we've seen him play before. But I, I would see him, him and somebody else, or maybe him and maybe two other people, to be used in a package to get mm -hmm. a big, you know, free agent to right. move, move down to San Antonio. So right, right now, I, I see those first two games as somebody else's problem, and I, I think yeah. the Spurs can move forward knowing that. Yeah, exactly. You talk about that log jam. We're not even thinking about even Malachi Branham. I mean, there's right. that. You know, I mean, the Spurs are invested in him, and they shut him down quick at the summer league. So that right. tells you what they think about his potential in the NBA. And they didn't bring up Blake Wesley. You know, do they do they want to still invest with him? So or there's Champagne. definitely a log jam. Or Champagne, yeah. Like, so I think all signs are pointing to perhaps Devontae may not be a spur to start this season, or if yeah. not, it'll be a short, short run uh, for him. You know, for just minutes now. You know, that's we're going back to what we said in one of the segments earlier, you know, how deep this team is. Yeah. And that gives you just an, an idea of just how log jam they are at, at certain positions, especially at that guard slash shooting guard uh, spot. And, and other big news, or bigger news, I should say, uh, as you already heard, the AT&T Center is no more. It mm. is over. It was a great 20-plus run, uh, but now it's time for some change. The new name of the Spurs home, I was about to say AT&T Center, uh, Spurs home is the Frost Bank Center. Yes, the team that had their patch a few years ago. Well, now they upgraded from the patch on the uniform to now the entire damn home. <laughs> they are the Frost Bank. They got the whole center. thing. They bought the, they they got the whole thing. Whole they part. went from Jersey patch to the <laughs> whole thing. Uh, some little news and notes about just that, digging deeper. Uh, there, will, there will be a new Frost Bank kind of a lobby area inside, the, uh, inside their new home. Cool. And Interesting enough, they're going to have this entire hall full of artwork and, and, and electronics and neon stuff, and they have something called the Puro Meter. So what that is, is the louder everybody's inside the bowl, the louder that hallway gets lit up. So uh, that's going to be pretty, really cool. Uh, and also, too, Frost Bank has been with the Spurs since day one when they were still part of Dallas. So yeah. their investment in Dallas Chaparral to bring them to San Antonio and then to keep them in San Antonio mm -hmm. has been instrumental. It's almost, you know, cosmic, you know, that now they are the new, uh, you know, the arena sponsor and moving on this new chapter in the Spurs history. Uh, Sean Elliott spoke to the crowds uh, yesterday uh, to reveal it. And you you like how they revealed it, just opening that big curtain, didn't you, Nick? I thought it was. I thought that was cool. I thought it was really yeah. cool just to just to see. You know, that's just the display of it. But you know, with Sean Elliott being there, and obviously he's going to be at all the yeah. you know, big events of, of announcing everything, kind of right. filling his role as as being the un, you know, kind of the, the spokesperson when yeah. it comes to the San Antonio Spurs. Um, but I, I think this is a very exciting and, and bright future. Um, I, I wore a blue shirt for you tonight. You know, oh, for, look at that. Look at that. We got some frost going that. on. We got some ice. You know what I mean? I, I don't have any jewelry. I, mean, I, I don't have that <laughs> yet, but I'll, one day I'll be frosty and have that yeah. all taken care of. But when it comes to the Frost Bank Center itself, um, I, I think that's exciting, not just for the Spurs as an organization, but it's kind of like, you know, you, you get down with your day ones. You get people mm -hmm. who got you from Dallas, from the Chaparrales to San Antonio. You, now they have an opportunity to be 
you know, one of the biggest banks in the country and have an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to be, you know, the name uh, of, of your arena, of your center. And I, and I think it's exciting, uh, you know, for yeah. both both organizations and, and for the Spurs moving forward. And something that we actually just talked about, which I was I was curious about, and I'm glad that you were able to help me out with this information, is that this doesn't mean that they're going to stay at that location. No, you know, no. there's still an opportunity for them to move mm -hmm. downtown, wherever yeah. that may be. And my assumption with this partnership is that that means that Frost Bank is going to move with them mm -hmm. to whichever yeah. location they go to downtown. Yeah. Because yeah. as we've all seen, there was the move out there to the east side. There's not the development that they promised that was going to be out there. Not really a lot of people are actually going to restaurants or shops in that mm -hmm. area because nothing was developed to actually make it that. So now there's this push to come more downtown to see more restaurants and more hotels and more excitement, mm -hmm. not just in the downtown, but in the south town area as well. Mm -hmm. See everything kind of booming and be exciting there that that's where the Spurs want to be as well. You mm -hmm. want them to be able to enjoy more of that city because you want, you know, businesses help businesses in that way. It's, you know, mm -hmm. B2B when it comes yeah. to the, their style. And so it's, it's going to be exciting to see how that even transitions into that. And we're going to have to start, you know, getting ready to say Frost Bank or, you know, center. You yeah. Know, I almost, I almost said AT&T, you know, yeah, you, it's hard you, you yeah. trip over it over the next couple of weeks and maybe yeah. a month of, of getting used to it. But how do you, how do you think the, the reaction is going to be when it comes to, you know, this transition? It's, it's almost like we're, like you mentioned before, we're saying goodbye to that last chapter and heading into a new one. Yeah, I, I think the, Sp the Spurs fans, for the most part, and and for me as well, uh, are embracing it. Uh, they're having fun with it. Uh, you know, they're, the whole frost, cold. You mentioned the ice thing. You know, the, the the memes are already popping up. I did one. I said I better hear before each and every home game the famous quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mister Freeze in the horrific Batman and Robin uh, movie, where uh, he says, and I'm paraphrasing here. He says uh, to the enemy, in this case, Batman. He says. He goes, allow me to introduce myself. So the Spurs, it'll be allow us to introduce ourselves. He goes, uh, I am, you know, Mr. Freeze. So in this case, uh, this is the Frost Center. He goes, you're, uh, and now it is prepare yourself for your doom. So <laughs> I would hope they, the Spurs use some sort of variation about that. Uh, but, you know, it's I like to take to this the exact opposite of San Antonio, especially yeah, right exactly. Now. When yeah, I looked out yeah. of my computer, it's like not frosty and cloudy. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. There's nothing frosty about there's San Antonio. Nothing frosty about San Antonio. Uh, but uh, you look, it's locally owned. You know, it's a local owned business. There was a lot of fear. There were a lot of Austin businesses investing in San Antonio from Airbnb to Dell. The list goes on and on. Uh, you know, now you have a frost bank local company that helped mm -hmm. the Spurs get to San Antonio, stay in San Antonio, mm -hmm. that should calm a lot of Spurs fans that are nervous about the move to Austin if, if there was going to be one. Sure. Also, too, you know, credit the Spurs, you know, they do try to get the people to stay post-game. Mm -hmm. They bring in, like, live acts. They they open up that back courtyard yeah. uh, for after hours, and it's a big open space. Uh, but they, the fans don't stick around because of the commute. They're like, you know what? Maybe I'll just go there for a beer, you know, let the, the traffic die out, and then I'm bolting. So you yeah. see it leave pretty fast. And for those of y'all who've never been to the AT&T Center, let me tell you, it's out in the middle of nowhere in the east side of San Antonio. Across the street is just like a, a parking lots, like empty parking lots. And there's nothing around it. There's uh, there's eighteen wheeler it's, depots across the street. There's like, eighteen there's, wheeler there's, depots and yeah. a highway, and then it's just yeah. nothing. It's nothing. I, there's there's an SAPD out, station out there nearby, you know, um, for safety. But for safety, right? <laughs> but but that's it. That's it. And yeah. you have to commute uh, to downtown, and that's mm -hmm. an additional about 10, 15 minute drive. Then you got to find parking downtown, which is if you've never been to San Antonio, it can be tedious. So, yeah, uh, good news for the Spurs. The Frost Bank Center, a local corporation, local company, banking company is here to yeah. help the Spurs usher into the new era, the Wimby era. Mm. So way to go, Spurs. But keep those memes coming, Spurs fans. I love them. So, uh, Nick, somebody's using the, um, the other uh, Frost guy from the Incredibles movie, you know, that Sam Jackson voiced over. Yes. Like, that, yes, should yes be like, that should be one of the mascots now. Okay. Like uh, Mr. Frost, I think that's what his name, but okay. loving it, loving it, loving it. Hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about uh, expectations into the next season? Did you just do what Nick did and spit out your water when you heard about what Vegas projects? 
we the uh, win off. total. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> what do you think about Devontae Graham and the Frost Bank Center? We need to know. You can let Nick know on Twitter at Nick underscore underscore Montes. What's going on with iHeartRadio? Uh, we're doing a lot of good things. Um, things are they're moving along when it comes to um, our our natural our national outreach, um, which is really exciting for for iHeart. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to me personally, um, I just actually started a new um, TikTok. Uh -oh. Okay. Um, so, and I only have a personal TikTok, but also me and one of my best friends, uh, we met at, um, at, at graduate school together. We went to journalism school together. Um, he and I just started a new page called fair to compare. Okay. And so if you're on TikTok, check out fair, the number two and compare. And what we do is we compare your favorite, you know, uh, whether it's a song, whether it's a fast food place, whatever it may be. And then we do like an NBA, NFL, NHL league, and we do the player equivalent of the oh, thing okay. that it falls on. So it's two wheels that spin. So for example, if you had to have the NBA and Chick-fil-A, so who is your player <laughs> equivalent? Who is your Chick-fil-A of the NBA and different ah, things like that. I it's see. fun games that we play. So we're on TikTok. It's called Fair and Number Two and Compare. Fair to Compare. So make sure you guys check that out. We're gonna have a lot of fun with that. And uh, yeah, we just we just started our new page, and so we're excited to uh, start throwing out some videos there once every other day. We're gonna po be posting right. them, so it's gonna be exciting. So basically, it's like a player that compares to Chick Fil A. Exactly. So I'll give oh, you okay. I'll give you this I'll give you this preview. Um, one of mine that I did. So an NBA. So my Chick Fil A of the NBA is the Big Nugget himself. The Serbian sniper Nikola Jokic. <laughs> I had to. Yeah. I had to make him my. Could just not just because of his consistency, but his, yeah. his personality. He's got great customer service when it comes to the way he's being treated. Yeah. People. He's his excitement for just going out there and just doing the job and then going home. I mean that that is all you want when it comes to Chick Fil A, and that's how I'm fearing to compare the two of them. That's that's my fear to compare for for the NBA. It's is. And Chick Fil A is is definitely Nikola Jokic. So yeah, I was gonna, I was going to go with Chris Paul. He's there Ooh. for you six days out of the week, but not not that one day you need him. Ah, Monday. That's that's a, that's a shot. That's a snipe right there. That's that was a, a snipe good right there. That's a snipe right there. Again, he is Nick Mantis. Follow him on Twitter at Nick underscore underscore Mantis. And one more time, that TikTok uh, a a show you have. It is fair to compare. Fair the number two and compare. So make sure you guys check it out. Give us a follow, and we'll make sure to follow you guys back. All right, you heard him. Make sure you do all of that. And uh, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Uh, next week, Monday, we'll be back again. Three shows of the week. It is the off season, uh, but we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen every day. Uh, you guys are the everydayers. And then on Monday, I believe with Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast, he is going to be coming on, and uh, probably about Wimby. Oh, oh. no, oh, Wimby. Wow. Wimby. I know. Shocker. The day that ends in Y, it's Wimby. <laughs> so for Nick Mantis, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs.